Hey guys, I'm painting on some muscle thumb anatomy for you because I want to show you exactly how cool this opposable digit is. But to give you a sense of its importance through history, Julius Caesar had the thumbs of all of his opponents cut off when they were captured. Think about it. Okay, so I'm starting off on the Palmer side, and so far I've painted on the adductor pollicis and the opponent's pollicis. So obviously they're gonna pull the thumb into adduction and opposition, and I'll explain those in a little bit because the thumb seems to have its own anatomical movement category. But really what you need to know is that these muscles originate towards the midline of the hand, the adductor pollicis at the capitate and the second and the third metacarpals, and the opponent's pollicis actually on the flexor retinaculum and the tubercle of the trapezium. That's a lot of words for basically the middle bone in your hand and some of your carpal bones. So just remember the basic idea. And then they extend out to the thumb. The insertion's grabbing on to basically the first metacarpal and up into the base of the first phalanx, which is your first thumb bone. Flipping the hand over, I'm starting off by painting the dorsal inner ossei, which are basically deep stabilizers of the thumb and the hand. And I wanna explain what I mean by this. So the lumbricals and the inner ossei are these deep muscles that lie in between the metacarpals of the hand. On the palmer side, these tiny little muscles work to extend and flex and adduct the fingers towards the center. And on the dorsal side, on the back of the hand, they work to abduct the fingers out away from each other. And because these tiny little muscles are nestled so deeply in the metacarpals, what they're really doing is stabilizing the base of the hand and allowing the thumb to do what it needs to do. Look at it this way. Your thumb is like a car in a NASCAR race and the lumbricals and the inner ossei are all the members of the pit crew that are helping the thumb to keep going and going and going. And so to all the members of the pit crew, we salute you. When you start to learn about thumb anatomy, you learn about the short muscles of the thumb and the long muscles of the thumb. And I cannot talk about the long muscles of the thumb without talking about the anatomical snuff box. The anatomical snuff box is a triangular deepening formed by the tendons of the long muscles of the thumb that was so convenient for placing a little pinch of snuff back in the day when snuff was a thing and vaping was not. So I'm starting off with the extensor pollicis brevis, and you'll notice as I paint each of these that they insert on the posterior aspect of the bones of the thumb, and they originate up into the radius and the ulna, and that unsung hero band of connective tissue, otherwise known as the interosseous membrane. Connective tissue has this awesome ability to not only attach one thing to another, but also serve as an attachment site itself. And this is the perfect example. I've started to paint on the extensor pollicis longus, which is longer and more superficial and crosses over the insertion of the brevis to reach onto the distal phalanx of the thumb and crosses over the origin to attach onto the ulna. The third long muscle of the thumb that I'm painting is the abductor pollicis longus, which is the most superficial, reaches up a little bit higher onto the ulna, and comes down and inserts itself into the base of the first metacarpal. As I paint on highlights and shadows for these muscles to try to make them pop a little bit more, the main thing I want you to notice is that these long muscles of the thumb are gonna pull the thumb up and back and away from the hand. So kind of like if you were gonna test out your hitchhiking skills. But the main thing I want you to notice is that these long muscles of the thumb are the antagonists to the muscles of the thumb that I painted on the palmer side. So you've got these muscles pulling the thumb out and away and the muscles on the flip side pulling the thumb down and in. I wanna take a moment to point out that when you're looking at muscles that are fighting against each other, Neither one of these groups are right. They're both doing their job and they're both just working really hard to live their authentic lives and do what they do as best as they can do it. Before I dive into how I think we can help as body workers, take a look at the long muscles of the thumb and notice that when a client or yourself is experiencing thumb pain, it's often a good idea to really work into the musculature that is seemingly so far away from the thumb itself, but often has the most impact on how the thumb operates. Before I paint on the last two muscles of the thenar eminence, I wanted to get down the extensor and the flexor retinaculum. Like the interosseous membrane, this thick band of fascia serves to stabilize the bones and serves as attachment sites for a lot of the muscles of the thumb. 
Just to be clear, on the posterior aspect of the wrist, this fascia bracelet is called the extensor retinaculum, and on the anterior aspect, it's called the flexor retinaculum. And the flexor retinaculum serves to anchor down three major muscles of the thenar eminence. The opponent's pollicis, which I painted earlier, the abductor pollicis brevis, and the flexor pollicis brevis, the last two of which I'm painting on now. These short squat little muscles serve to pull the thumb down towards the forearm, but most importantly, they harbor a ton of trigger points. So a lot of joint pain that happens in the thumb is genuinely arthritic, but if there's no arthritis there, go digging for trigger points. Chances are you'll find a couple. As I start filling in the gaps for what we would see if we were to actually pull away the skin in this part of our body, I want to revisit the idea of how we as body workers handle groups of muscles that are antagonists. So when you have sets of muscles like we do with the long muscles of the thumb in the back and the short muscles of the thumb in the front that are fighting against each other to pull this joint into multiple different directions, maybe start thinking a little bit more about your role less as a healer and more as a mediator. Sit down, listen to both groups of muscles, hear what they have to say, calm the group that is angry, strengthen the group that is silent, and give them something they can work towards together. Healing is, after all, so often about balance, and your poor thumb has just found itself stuck in the middle of a heated debate.